Thank you to everybody who entered into our Mustang giveaway. The response was really great. People really liked it, so let's do it again. We have our next car. It's outside right now. You know, I'm going to keep it a secret, but uh, we got to film it still. So to make sure you don't miss out on the next giveaway, click the link in the description right down here, and you won't miss it. Fill out the form and everything, and you'll be good. Before the Tesla Plaid, before the Chevy SS, and before the Kia Stinger, there was only one car that could challenge the eternal LS400. The magnificent, the decadent, the V12-powered... 7 Series. Never bury the lead. This is a 5-liter, double-throttle body, double ECU, 12-cylinder, double-fuel-pumped, 295 horsepower at 5,200 RPM, 332 pound-feet of torque at 4,100 RPM, M7 B50 engine. Effortlessly kicking the 4,167-pound long, long wheelbase 7 Series to its nanny, tate, nanny state top speed of 155 miles an hour. And it keeps it there. Already, the Bimmer boys are shouting out the punchline. 8 Series! 8 Series! It's not original! The 8 Series had this engine too! Same engine in both cars. Same top speed. Same power. Different transmissions, but both 4-speed autos. Here's the difference. A V12 7 Series is for a rich person with responsibilities. An 8 Series is for a rich chode who takes zinc because he read on bodybuilding.com that it makes your cum thicker. He's got a triple beam scale and he's weighing his bust in life water bottles. An 8 Series is for someone who pairs Cristal with Uncrustables. A 750 long wheelbase is for James Stillwell, unconcerned, but ready for anything. As good as the M7 B50 is, the focus of the BMW 750 IL is not the engine. It's the windows. Yes, they're thicker than an iPhone 4 in an otter box. Thick like that Jim Bros bust when the zinc finally works. An inconsolable crotch spawn could be throwing themselves on the ground, spilling Fruit Loops and coloring books everywhere, and you wouldn't hear them. Pure isolation. This car is quiet. Money? Money is so nice. Shattering base from a Nissan Frontier on Route 100 could be assaulting the air. But in here, in a 7 Series from the 90s, all you would notice would be a distant rumble. In-car entertainment didn't exist in 1993. Here's a tape deck if you wish, but a 750 IL offered you the absence of sensory input. Just a gentle, just a cozy buzz from that 12-cylinder engine. Until you reach 80 miles an hour, and that's where the V12 gets its second wind. 60 to 100 miles an hour feels faster than 0 to 60. Under acceleration, the transmission doesn't shift into fourth gear until 80 miles an hour. Very long gears. And unlike other BMWs I've driven, and just like other BMWs I've driven, like the 5 Series with the tiny engine, this BMW doesn't care. The M7 B50 doesn't sound like it cares. What RPM it's turning? Oh, we're, we're turning 4,000 or 5,000 RPM? Okay. Then that's what we're doing. Hmm. Amazon sells penis pumps now. Can I place an order with my 750's car phone? Dude, it's a car phone. <laughs> it still works. <laughs> Out of the speakers. Yep. Yep, it still works. The BMW 750 IL exists in eternal opposition to the Mercedes Benz S Class because both companies arguably made their subsequent luxury sedan offerings better through competition. In the 70s, you had the W116 carving up the road on a 6.9 liter M100 V8, which was going up against BMW's turbocharged six cylinder in the E23. In the 1980s, 
The W126 brought an Autobahn-ready 5.6-liter V8 to take on BMW Z32, which introduced the V12 to the fleet. Mercedes-Benz was the leader in its class for a time, but BMW was coming for that ass like back taxes because you can't spell luxurious without IRS. BMW gave us its first V12 engine. And while it may not be the long, continuous nut of a Toyota Century, this is as close as you're going to get into the United States without paying an import tax the size of Alaska. This engine displaces 4.9 liters, but some people just round up to 5, which is at least consistent with measuring from the balls. This makes around 298 horsepower. Most people round up to 300, which is at least, you know, consistent with measuring from the balls. Now, this is technically an E32, although some will try and tell you that because of the engine, it's basically an 8 series, which is at least consistent with measuring from the balls. Now, this was the first generation to be subjected to the old gentleman's agreement between the German automakers capping top speed at no higher than 155 miles an hour. This 1993 model was essentially the last year of the E32 before it leveled up and became the E38. BMW 750IL. My dick is so long it stirs the toilet water. Now, the E32 was the first production car with xenon headlights and double thick windows so owners didn't have to deal with the airborne droplets and regional swear words of the common rabble. Because money may not buy happiness, but it can buy something better. Peace of mind. This was the car for the briefcase-wielding, key-bumping businessman realizing that while the 80s were over, Reaganomics were here to stay. Every concern is met with a firm, let's put a pin in that, or an even firmer, it is what it is. A BMW 750iL in its natural habitat in 1993 is with a man who can barely see the road because he's sitting on fat stacks of founding fathers. Power side mirrors when reversing. Power rear seats, heated power rear seats, a telephone with room to write down your 10 most important contacts, the first BMW with traction control, two separate washer reservoirs, a light mist for the windshield and a stronger wash for the headlights. It's a collection of luxury eccentricities alongside the standard fare, like an extended body, that's what the IL is, you know, longer wheelbase. Four and a half extra inches of rear legroom. BMWs, these sort of new classics, can mean so much more to enthusiasts than to the initial market BMW was targeting with these cars in the early 90s. Case in point, here's the story with the 7 Series. Dom's dad leased this car new in 1992 and eventually traded it in in 1996, after which the car dropped off the map. And although he didn't have it that long, this was the only car Dominic's dad really missed. It was his first BMW. It started right at the top, didn't he? And one would think that for whatever good they offer now, it was significantly better when this car was brand new. Unfortunately, Dom's dad never got to own another before passing away. In the years after, Dom found some of his dad's old paperwork. One of the documents contained the car's VIN number. Dom tracked the car down, got the owner's address, and went and knocked on the guy's door. The man who owned this car was only its second owner, meaning this car went directly from, Tom, directly from Dom's dad to that guy. However, the car had been sitting for years and hadn't seen much action beyond replacing the engine with another one of the same model an engine younger than the 143,000 miles on the odometer. As it turns out, the second owner said he decided to buy the car when he saw Dom's dad pulling into the dealership to trade it back back in 1996. There's a cigar burn from Dom's dad on the A-pillar, which is how Dom was able to know for sure that this was his father's car. And there was a non-zero chance the second owner saw Dom as a kid rolling around town in this car. He tracked down the man who bought his father's car and then bought it back. No crazy Tarantino fight scene. Initially, the man was unsure of how much he'd be willing to sell the car for, so Dom took his time to raise money playing his guitar and playing in his band and finally got the guy to part with this car for $2,500 and three cartons of Newports. Dom checked the buy car funded by music 
bucket off of his list and got to work making this car roadworthy again. According to Dominic, uh, this really only needed one, fuel, one new fuel pump to get running. This has two fuel pumps, both in the trunk. As for quality of life improvements, it really needs a new radio, and the air conditioning needs a charge, and cosmetically it's missing the chin spoiler and a small piece of the grill, but other than that, this runs. It's a fine piece of machinery. It's perfectly functional. Fuel economy is nice and thirsty at 14 city, 19 highway, but again, this is a V12 engine. Uh, Dominic can get this uh, consistently up into the 20s just by taking it easy. Fueling this thing, a little bit expensive. This must run on 93 octane. When you fill the tank, it's uh, $69. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the buy-in for a car like this anyway. In for a penny, in for a pounding, right? Blammers in the morning, blammers in the evening, blammers at supper time. With blammers on the Craigslist, you can have the blammer anytime you like. Could I stick your fan down my pants? Now, there was no uh, badge on the rear of the car until the owner gave it to him. Uh, but it ended up being wrong anyway. Can you guess what's wrong about it? Pause the video, go into the comments and guess. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. Give up? So yeah, apparently the letters are period correct, but the numbers are wrong because they aren't slanted. According to Dom, only BMW enthusiasts ever catch this or appreciate the period correct German plate or the passenger visor signed by a cannibal record holder at Bullion. Oh, crap. Is it Ed Bolin or Ed Bullion? Ed Bullion. It's Ed Bullion, right? Ed Bullion. Vidnwicky guy, right? Ed Bullion. Anyway. And maybe you have to be an enthusiast to want to invest this much into pre-OBD2 tech, where a malfunction means you're doing your best Doogie Hauser diagnosis to try and guess what the, where the problem originated. But really, it's functioning form. It's an easy car for anyone to appreciate with the right mindset. But even if you divorce the 7 Series from its part in a legendary heritage of luxury sedans, it's enjoyable in a way the Toyota Century isn't and can't be. I love the Toyota Century. I think it's the best car ever made. One thing it can't do is be fun to drive. That's not the Century's, it's not the point of the Toyota Century. Toyota Century is a car that you ride in. You were driven in. The BMW 7 Series does the same job, but it's fun to drive. You own this car. You're getting in it, and you're hauling ass. Thanks, Dom. This was a fun day. BMW News Radio 750. Okay, that's probably way too regional a joke for people to actually get.